I am presenting along with my co-authors an update on the vision study cohort A. And there are a few different cohorts that are built into the vision study cohorts A, B, and, and C. Cohorts A and C are, are quite similar. They're both treating patients with um, this unique oncogenic alteration called Medexon 14 skipping in lung cancer patients specifically. And the cohort B, which we've not yet presented, is focusing on patients who are med amplified. So that's something just to sort of file away for, for the future. Uh, we have presented cohort A before um, on multiple occasions. I think the um, the most high profile was back in 2019, actually, when we first uh, I first met VG Oncology after we had presented an oral abstract um, with an update in a New England Journal paper from last year, and then a further update now uh, from a data lock in July 2020. So those are the data that uh, I'm presenting for World Lung. And it's an update on the overall efficacy. Um, and I can tell you from, from that standpoint, it's very similar to what we've presented before. So with the benefit of time, we've seen consistency in the data, which I think is the big message, the overall response rate, uh, depending on the cohort you look at, hovers around 45 uh, to 50%. And the median PFS uh, consistently is around 8.9 to nine months and a median duration of response of about 11 months. Uh, in this analysis, we took a little bit more of a detailed look in the different lines of setting now that the data have matured for patients who are treatment naive and patients who have been previously treated to take a look to see whether or not there's been any kind of difference in efficacy based on that as some others have reported with other met specific drugs. And in fact, we have seen virtually no difference. So there's been a great degree of consistency whether or not Tepotinib is given in the first line setting or the second line setting and beyond. And then the other part of the uh, abstract that we presented was drilling down uh, further on uh, patients who've been previously treated in terms of the kinds of treatments they've received, uh, whether it be uh, immunotherapy-based treatments or chemotherapy-based treatments or both, again, to see whether or not there's been a difference in efficacy broken down by that. And this sample size is of smaller, but again, a surprising degree of consistency, uh, which I think is always nice to see. And so really, I think that's the take home message for this updated presentation that with the benefit of time, uh, particularly for the smaller subset analyses that we uh, have been trying to take a look at, we've seen con continued persistent consistency in the efficacy uh, across these different populations.